see you begging for the punishment we about to give you. Ah!
agent. before blowing the lid off, I'd be great. All right, get them out first, but don't jeopardize the mission. We're going in on your heels. The field break ends here.
Hey, hey, what is up, everyone? The LDB is back at it again. Coming at you today with the much-requested Pred PvE build. Now, I had mentioned doing this build on the Pred PvP 1.8.3 build. If you haven't seen that video, I will have a link for that in the description below, as well as at the end of the video, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But I simply asked you guys if you would want to see a Pred PvE build because... I really never ventured into PvE with Pred before, as well as on the six-piece talent for Pred, it does mention NPCs. So I asked you guys if you'd want to see it, and a handful of you guys actually did request it. Uh, you know, so here it is. Shout out to you guys. And I'm really happy that I put this build together, because if you could see from the gameplay, the damage output is absolutely ridiculous, especially for being a 9,000 stamina build, and the crit bleeds that you are able to get with this are absolutely through the roof and I will break down how we are going to get those today so as always if you enjoy these videos or find them helpful definitely smash that like button subscribe for future content especially if you are new to the channel and make sure you have that notification bell on as well as go ahead and drop a comment down there letting me know if you've ever messed around with Pred in PvE before and how you've got it to work for you so let's get into it Okay, so let's go over these skills and talents really quick. Nothing too crazy here. Pretty much what you would expect on the majority of Pred builds, I guess you could say. Um, I'm going to be using a Recon Pack Pulse because it does have the highest crit chance and the lowest cooldown time out of all of the pulses. I've said this before in other videos. I'm just going to reiterate this here again. Um, as you can see on the Scrambler, we're at 13.3 chance and the cooldown of 51 seconds. The Tactical Scanner, 13.3 chance with a 56 second cooldown. And the Recon Pack Pulse here, we have 14.5 chance and a cooldown of 38.5 seconds. So that's a big deal as far as cooldown and the crit chance goes. Um, we're really trying to spec more into crit chance because we are using assault rifles with this build and we are losing the given crit chance that we get if we are, were using SMGs, which we typically would be, at least I would be overall. Um, so we need to get our crit chance up a little bit and this is a good way to do it as well as that damage and you get it back every 38 seconds. That's not too bad. Um, so moving on to the boost booster shot again pretty straightforward um, temporarily increasing damage and damage resistance so when you pop this uh, and you go in and then you bleed them the bleed will be a little bit stronger because you got that increase of damage and if you got your pulse going at the same time you're doing even better and if you were watching the gameplay you saw me pop the pulse the booster shot and I actually had a tack link on and that's how we got that really big bleed That was really fun. Uh, you know, I'm trying to break a million, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to settle for that. So either way, as far as uh, signatures go, I'm going with a recovery link overall. I just put the tack link on just to kind of show off a little bit and see what we could do as far as getting a big bleed. Um, but the recovery link, because I'm running solo, if you're running with a team, obviously you could switch that up. But that's about that. So let's go on to the talents. Okay, so with the talents, we do have a little bit to talk about. I just want to touch on a couple things, so just hang in there really quick. Um, with Shrapnel, obviously, this is pretty much a given. Applying bleed to any target triggers a 30% chance per each target in a 10-meter radius. So if they're all clumped up together and you put the bleed on one of them, there's a good chance it's going to spread to the rest of them, and those big bleed ticks can really knock them down a lot, if not take them out completely. You might not even have to land any shots when they run off in the corner and just bleed out and die. It's a great thing. I don't leave home without it. Now, as far as precision goes, I'm simply using this because, again, I want to get that crit chance and damage up as much as possible. I know that the precision and the pulse do not stack, but when the pulse is down, precision will come into effect, and then vice versa, you know, when I have the pulse back, you know, going back and forth. So that's the only reason I'm using that, as well as um, steady hands here. This is a huge one for me on this build because this is somewhat of a headshot build. Um, enter any cover to reduce recoil by 25% for 10 seconds. So this will definitely help you land those headshots. And the reason I say that is because of the way that headshot damage scales between assault rifles to SMGs. If you've ever noticed, SMGs come with a base of 50% headshot damage. Assault rifles come with a base of 75. So if you can land those headshots, even a couple, that's really going to crank up your bleed, and that's one of the tricks for this build. Um, so moving on to on the move, kill a hostile while moving to reduce incoming damage by 15% for 10 seconds. So that's a pretty good thing. You get a little bit of a buff there. Um, I went with that over um, critical save here because I'm trying to save medkits, and I find that I 
kill enemies more than I'm popping medkits. So I'm um, getting that resistance up. If you want to combo them, you could, um, but I'm really liking it the way I have set up here. Try it out and let me know what you're uh, thinking about that in the comments. So let's get on to the build itself. And here it is. So, as you can see, nothing crazy, six-piece pred, we have the stamina over 9,000, we have the firearms at 3,900. Would you have honestly thought firearms at 3,900 when you were watching the gameplay? Because the bleeds that we're getting, the damage output is absolutely through the roof, we have all the stamina to fall back on, 590,000 toughness, I'd say we're doing pretty good. Now, the reason that my firearms is under 4,000, like the majority of other pred builds um, that are at least mostly optimized is because i am using these purple damage to elite mods and the reason i bring this up is because if you check this mod out right here it's a great mod to stamina four percent damage to elites but it's only a plus 202 when you compare that to a yellow mod that can go up to 267 this one for instance plus 262 compared to 202 that's a, that's a big difference when you multiply that by a couple mods across the build. And that can definitely change your firearms and stamina number. Which is also why I have my gloves rolled for stamina. Typically I would be able to get them rolled for firearms and still keep 9,000 stamina. If I was to roll my backpack, chest, mask, knee pads, and holster for stamina, put some stamina mods, and then like I said, you can roll the gloves for firearms and boost that firearms up over 4,000 and still stay at 9,000 stamina. Not with this build. As soon as you put those purple mods on, it's extremely hard to keep it over 9,000 and over 4,000 firearms. So just a heads up on that, but at the same time, you might be thinking, well, why don't you just change them to some crit chance mods? Well, three crit chance mods equals three crit chance up three percent crit chance up these three mods right here the purple damage to elite mods is ten percent damage to elites ten percent overall damage to elites so it's not just a couple percent of a chance it's ten percent raw damage up and that's why i picked that and i would still run with the 3900 firearms so let's take a look at what we actually get from pred and then move on from there Okay, so the two-piece gives us plus 10% reload speed. That's pretty good. The three-piece gives us plus 8% assault rifle damage and plus 8% SMG damage. Now, the reason that I chose assault rifles on this build right here is for a couple reasons. One, the range on assault rifles is much better than SMG, so you can reach out and bleed them at a distance, as well as the enemy armor damage that comes standard on assault rifles. Enemy armor damage definitely scales much higher in PvE than it does in PvP, so it's just one more stat pushing your damage through and, you know, dealing damage. Um, as well as, like I had mentioned before, the headshot damage base on assault rifles is 75%, whereas SMG headshot damage bonus is only 50%. So, again, the more headshots you can land with this accurate rifle, the higher your bleed is going to be over just a straight crit build with an SMG. I tested it, I tried it out. Uh, basically, a max crit SMG build, you're going to be getting 300, 330. You might get like a 350 bleed. You know, I, I talk like that's not very much, but 350 compared to 500, that's a big difference. Or you can get up to six, seven, 800, depending on the circumstances that's a big difference that you won't be able to get with SMGs. So either way, moving on to the four piece here, we have uh, the Talent Predator's Mark, hit 10 shots without switching target to make the target bleed for 50% of the damage already done by those bullets. So again, the more headshots you can land in those 10 shots, the more damage you are going to be doing. And that's just one of the tricks for this build. That's that's really key. Uh, now, the five-piece gives us another 10% reload speed. Awesome. And another 8% assault rifle damage and 8% SMG damage. Now, the six-piece, this is where it gets a little bit interesting here. We get improved Predator's Mark. Hitting 10 shots without switching targets now applies the Predator's Mark, which makes the target bleed for 50% of the damage already done by those bullets. The damage over time to the target is increased 15% for every 3,000 stamina and can critically hit. When at 9,000 thousand stamina the damage over time bonus is increased by a hundred and twenty percent hundred and twenty percent is where you need to be at i tried out a seven and six build thinking just a little bit more damage up front might work out nope 
you want to go with this 120% bleed. So get up to 9,000 stamina, whatever you have to do. And at the bottom here, the icing on the cake, the Predator's Mark ignores the status effect immunity of NPCs. So if they have a box down or anything like that, it doesn't matter. You're going to bleed them. It's going to spread. does not matter. You're going to be doing damage to them. So let's check out the weapons and then move on to the specifics of the build. Alright, so my weapons that I'm going to be using are two lightweight M4s. I have one for damage and I have one for healing. My one for damage has deadly, accurate, and ferocious on it. I really was trying to get deadly, destructive up here and then ferocious in the given talent. You need ferocious in the given talent because otherwise it does require electronics and we're really not going for that on this build. Uh, so this is what I got and accurate actually is awesome because again like I was saying those headshots really do count accuracy increased 25% That's nothing to shake a stick at now deadly crit hit damage increased 15% pretty straightforward Ferocious damage against elite and named enemies is increased by 10% so anybody with a yellow bar that 10% damage up on top of deadly on top of the purple mods and we haven't even got to the gear pieces yet. So you see where I'm going with this. It really does hit really hard. We're at 19.1 per bullet uh, and 24% enemy armor damage. Now the mods that I'm using on this are a magazine with mag size, crit damage, and crit chance. I did not go with rate of fire because, again, I would much rather focus on that crit chance and damage to make those bleeds go up. I mean, just push that crit chance and damage as much as you can. Uh, now the optics here, we have uh, crit chance crit damage and headshot damage and again push that headshot damage as much as you can if you start with 75 percent with an assault rifle keep on going with it keep pushing it as far as you can now the muzzle we have crit damage crit chance and headshot damage and the under barrel we have crit damage stability and some optimal range and again any way you can get some more stability and range on the weapon is a good thing as well now uh my secondary weapon like i said is the healer we have predatory sustained and determined pretty nice combo here we have sustained that kicks in six percent uh you know health on a kill right there and then predatory goes to work 35 percent over 20 seconds and we have determined here killing a target reduces all skill cooldowns by 7.5 percent so if you need to get your signature back if you need to get your booster shot uh your pulse whatever you want to do what any kind of skill you need this is going to help get it back as well as heal you on top so that's pretty much for the weapons you could always go with you know like a bullfrog or a mdr i know the bleeds from the mdr are great but that semi-automatic it, it's really hard to just keep those 10 shots on and you know getting the right talents as well on them being an exotic weapon is pretty tough so i just went with the lightweight m4s and honestly it's been working out great so let's go on to the build specifics itself Okay, so the chest piece that I have here is rolled for stamina. We have health, health on a kill, and ammo capacity. Now, the reason that I went with health on a kill here is because, like I said, my secondary weapon does have sustained and predatory on it. So, in a pinch, I can pull out my secondary. That's 11% health on a kill on top of predatory starting to heal me over time. Now, if you bleed multiple targets at one time and they all die at one time, you get one big chunk of health back, and it really can help you out. So even that little bit of health on a kill can really push it a long way with this build. Don't overlook that. Um, and we have two firearms with damage to elite mods on there. Now the mask we have rolled for stamina with crit chance and damage to elites. The crit chance used to be enemy armor damage. I originally had enemy armor damage on there, but I noticed that the... Crit damage bleeds, the big bleeds, were not really happening too much. I was still doing pretty good numbers, but it was not those big crit bleeds. I was actually doing enemy armor damage bleeds, the blue bleeds, and I really didn't like that, so I went a little bit more for crit chance, and all of a sudden it started to work a lot better, and now we're getting those big, huge bleeds, and I'm loving it. With that damage to elites on top, it's awesome. And we have a firearms with crit chance mod on the mask. Now, moving on to the knee pads, we have rolled for stamina, crit damage, damage to elites, disrupt resistance, and increased kill XP. So pretty much, I would say, almost god roll for PvE. 
Uh, we got that crit damage and damage to elites. That's what I'm mainly focused on. I wish that disrupt resistance was bleed or shock resistance, something like that. But it is what it is. And we got that increased kill XP. So we're getting like 3,000 XP per kill. And we're getting a whole lot of field caches real quick with this build. Uh, now, the mod that I have on here is a firearms with crit chance mod and a 2% pulse crit hit damage mod. Now, the holster here, we have 1401s across the board with the crit chance on there. And we have a 2% pulse crit hit chance mod on here. Chance. We're going to start specking more into the chance. Like I said, the damage we have taken care of pretty well once I show you the character sheet. The chance is what we need to focus on. So, moving on to the gloves. We have rolled for stamina with assault rifle damage, crit chance, and crit damage. Again, I do have some gloves down there that I had some enemy armor damage on. I tried it out. Again, I just kept going back to the crit chance, and those crit bleeds are what I'm going for. Those big bleeds. So, moving on to the backpack, we have rolled for stamina with crit damage and ammo capacity, and we have a... Uh, stamina with damage to elite mods and two more two percent pulse crit hit chance mods so that's the build right there let's take a look at the character sheet and break that down really quick uh, like i said we're about 19,000 per bullet crit chances at 28 percent but that's before the pulse or precision anything like that the crit hit damage like i said we're doing pretty good there 119 percent headshot damage here we go 87%. Again, let me reiterate this again. SMG's base headshot damage are 50%. Assault Rifle's headshot damage base is 75%. So right there, again, the more headshots you can land with this build, with all the damage to elites, etc. on it, it's really going to bleed them bad. Aim for the face. Now we got 25% accuracy. That is awesome. A little bit of stability. Got some pretty good range, 29 meters. Not too bad a reload time because that reload speed there is 20%. We have assault rifle damage up 28% right there. Not too bad. Um, and we have the damage to elites at 48%. Again, this damage to elites should not ever be overlooked over the crit chance or anything like that. Go with damage to elites as much as you can because, again, this is 48% total damage on top. Whatever kind of damage you're doing, add 48%, and that's what, you, what you're actually doing. Now, the health on a kill, nothing crazy, 5%, but again, it would be 11 if I had my secondary weapon equipped. We have enemy armor damage at 24%, so we're going to push through that a little bit, but that's better than a big fat goose egg. Big zero right there would be not too good. 24% is better than nothing. Um, and now the skills, obviously, we're not doing too good there. Uh, the toughness, we're at 590,000. Max health is almost 400,000. So we're doing pretty solid there. And as far as the armor goes, I'm getting there. I'm pushing it. But, uh, you know, DivTech is, uh, you know, one of those things. That I got 10 different builds going, and it is what it is. It, I'll get to it, though, for sure, because this build is amazing. Uh, the health regen, 199. Uh, no protection, nothing like that. And like I said, we did terrible on the resistances here. Only got some disrupt. Uh, but we do have good chunk of increased kill XP right there. So we're going to be getting a whole lot of those field caches. So that's about it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video or took something away from it. Hopefully you enjoy big bleeds because if you try this build out, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> so as always, if you enjoy these videos or find them helpful at all, definitely smash that like button, subscribe for future content, especially if you are new to the channel, and go ahead and drop a comment down there letting everybody know how you're running Pred in PvE in 1.8.3. I really would be interested to see how other people have been running this, if so, at all. Um, I've never really done it before, in all honesty. It's mainly just been my PvP build, but in PvE, it is still... It destroys everything. I, I'm absolutely loving it, especially when you get a healer on your team. Oh, boy. Game over. So, again, as always, guys, hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. You guys take it easy. Later.